Hello, I'm Matt Mori with the Applications Team for Texas Instruments Hercules Safety Microcontroller Group. Today, using the Halcogen and CoComposer Studio tools, I'm going to show you how to complete SPI transfers with little CPU overhead by using the MIPSPI and DMA modules. The MIPSPI module is a 16-bit, configurable, synchronous, multi-buffered, multi-pin serial peripheral interface. It is a programmable link shift register that is generally used for high-speed communication between external peripherals or other microcontrollers. Compatibility mode of the MIPSPI makes it behave exactly like a standard SPI module and ensures full compatibility with other SPIs. The MIPSPI includes several safety features, such as parity error detection on all reads, detection of slave desynchronization, and detection of a mismatch in data length. The DMA controller is used to transfer data between two locations in the memory map without involving the CPU. Typically, the DMA module is used to transfer blocks of data between external and internal data memories, restructure portions of the internal data memory, continually service a peripheral or page program sections to internal program memory. Today, we will be using it to continually service the MIPSPI peripheral as shown by the green highlight. The DMA module is CPU independent, has 32 peripheral DMA requests, supports 8, 16, 32, or 64-bit transactions, has channel chaining capability, and supports memory protection. Here is a detailed view of the DMA internal architecture. DMA data read and writes happen through port B, while module configuration is done via the peripheral bus. Five interrupt request lines go out of the DMA module to signal that a certain transfer status is reached. Local RAM, which contains the DMA control packets, is secured with parity. In this exercise, we are going to use Halcogen to generate the MIPSPI driver. We will then use CoComposer Studio to write code that uses the MIPSPI and DMA modules. To complete this exercise, we will need a Windows-based PC and a TMS570 or RM Hercules development kit. We will also need Halcogen and CoComposer Studio. To get started, you need to have Halcogen installed. If you do not already have Halcogen, you can download it from the tools and software area on the website, ti.com slash Hercules. Halcogen can also be installed directly from the software DVD that is included in all Hercules development kits. The first step is to launch Halcogen. To start the Halcogen application, go to the Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, Hercules, and finally, Halcogen. To start a new Halcogen project, select File, New, Project. Once the new project window has opened, the device family and specific device must be selected. Then the name of the project can be entered along with the location for all the generated code to be stored. I'm using the RM48 HDK, and because we are evaluating the MIPSPI and DMA modules, I'm just going to call the project MIPSPI underscore DMA. Pick a folder on your local drive to save the project to. I already have a folder called MIPSPI underscore DMA on my main drive, and that is where I'm going to store this project at. If this folder doesn't exist, Halcogen will ask if it can create the folder for you. Just say yes. Now that we have a new project, the first thing I like to do is click on the drivers page and deselect every driver. Then I go back and only pick exactly what I need, which in this case is MIPSPI1. Most pins on the Hercules microcontroller can have multiple functions and need to be configured properly before they can be used. Just click on the pin mux tab and select the modules you are using. If there is a conflict, it will be shown in this text box. If there is a conflict, you will need to scroll down until you see the conflict. Once you find the conflict, you can fix the issue by ensuring only one pin function is selected per row. For this demo, we are not going to be connecting the MIPSPI to an external device, so there's no need for the chip select function. Now we can configure the MIPSPI module by clicking on the tab labeled MIPSPI1. Halcogen pre-configures the module as a master with default settings, which is exactly what we want for this demo. To change your data format, use the MIPSPI1 Data Formats tab. To change delay settings, use the MIPSPI1 Delays tab. MIPSPI supports multiple transfer groups. For this demo, we will use a length of 127. This value will come into play later when we are writing code in CoComposer Studio. We should also change the chip select option to none. The Port Settings tab allows you to configure unused module pins as general I.O. pins. The last thing we have to do in Halcogen is to generate our code. Just go to File, Save, and then File, Generate Code. The demo I'm showing today is also included with all Halcogen installs. Just go to Help, Help Topics, Examples, and finally, 
example underscore MIPSPY DMA dot C. The help file includes screenshots of all necessary settings, DMA drivers, as well as working application code. For our demo, we will need to copy the provided dma.c and dma.h files from the Halcogen examples directory to our project directory. Now that Halcogen has generated the driver code and we have copied the required DMA files, we can use CoComposer Studio to write and test user code. To start CoComposer Studio, go to the Start menu and select Programs, Texas Instruments, CoComposer Studio, and finally, CoComposer Studio. When CoComposer Studio launches, it will ask you to select a workspace. You should select the same folder you stored the Halcogen project in. This will create a workspace, which will hold all of your user settings, as well as your project source files. Once CoComposer Studio finishes launching, go to Project, New, CCS Project. In the Project Settings window, make sure you name the project the same thing you named your Halcogen project. By selecting the same name, this will allow CCS to automatically see the source files that were generated by Halcogen. Next, you need to select the correct processor. I'm using the RM48 HDK, which has an RM48L950 microcontroller. You also need to select the correct emulator. I'm using the onboard XDS100. Halcogen already generated our source files for us, so I'm just going to create an empty project. As you can see, the Halcogen generated .c and .h files have already been picked up by CCS. Also, the dma.c and dma.h files we copied from the Halcogen examples directory have been found by CCS. The first thing I like to do when I have a brand new project is to go into the project settings and modify the debug setting to speed up the programming of the microcontroller. Click on debug, then select flash settings, and finally select necessary sectors only under the erase options. This tells CCS to only erase the minimum number of required sectors needed to store our compiled code. On large flash devices, such as the RM48L950, this can speed up the programming phase when launching the debugger. You also need to add the Halcogen generated include folder. This tells the compiler where it can find our various function definitions. To add the include folder, just click on the Add button, select Workspaces, and finally, select the include folder. Now we can start writing code. The user entry point is in the main function stored in sys underscore main dot c. Before I write any significant amount of code, I like to make sure my build process works. For now, I'm just going to put an infinite loop inside of the main function. To build the project, just click on the hammer in the toolbar. If there are any errors in the build process, they will show up in the problems window located at the bottom right. Since we have no errors, it means the build process is working properly. Now we can write actual MIPSPY and DMA code. For this demo, the code has already been written for us and is included with all Halcogen installs in the example directory as shown earlier. To get started, first copy the included lines, then copy the function definitions. Now I'm going to copy the transmit and receive buffers. I'm setting the length of the receive buffers to 127 because as you recall in the Halcogen project earlier, we set the length of the transfer group 0 to 127. Next, copy the contents of the main function. Don't worry about understanding this code for now. We will come back later and understand what each line does. Finally, copy over the functions. Now that we have all code copied over, we can build the project by clicking on the hammer in the toolbar. As shown in the CCS console, the compilation failed. 
The failure is due to a bug in the provided Halcogen example code that we just copied over. This bug has already been fixed in an upcoming release of Halcogen, but just in case, here's how you fix it. Just rename the function. In this example, I'm just adding the suffix local to all three occurrences of the function name. Now let's build the project again. This time, the compilation was successful. Once the build has finished, launch the debug perspective by clicking on the bug icon. For this demo, we will be using the built-in loopback features to send data out the MIPSPY transmit buffer and into the receive buffer. The data transfers between the MIPSPY buffers and RAM will be performed by the DMA module without any CPU overhead. To illustrate the loopback, we need to be able to see the contents of the transmit and receive data. Right-click on both the TX data and RX data variables and click on Add Watch Expression. Now let's execute the first line of code, which will initialize the transmit data. As you can see, the receive data buffer has nothing in it as we haven't run the program yet, but the transmit buffer has the initialized data. Now just click Run. After the program has executed for a few seconds, pause the execution by clicking on the yellow pause button. If we look at the buffers now, you can see the transmit buffer still has what we expect. But now the receive buffer also has the same contents. This means the MIPSPY loopback and DMA transfers worked. The contents of the transmit buffer were shifted out and immediately shifted back into the receive buffer. Now let's explore how the code works. The first line of code is just initializing our transmit buffer with some random data by calling the local function load data pattern. When using Halcogen to generate your drivers, you also need to initialize the driver before you can use it. You can initialize the driver by calling the MIPSPY init function. This function call and other MIPSPY specific function call definitions can be found in the Halcogen generated MIPSPY.h file. The MIPSPY enable loopback function enables the built-in connection between the transmit and receive paths. This allows us to emulate data transfers without connecting an external device. The next function call, DMA enable, brings the DMA module out of reset. DMA rec assign sets up the DMA channel. DMA config control packet configures the DMA control packet and includes the source address, destination address, and the length of the data. After the control packet has been configured, it can be set via the DMA set control packet function. Next, we set the DMA to trigger on hardware request via the DMA set channel enable function. The MIPSPY DMA config function sets the MIPSPY module to use the DMA module. The MIPSPY transfer function initiates a transfer for the specified transfer group. The MIPSPY's isTransferComplete function checks to see if the transfer for the specified transfer group has finished. The MIPSPY getData function transfers the data from the specified transfer group to the received buffer. The length of the buffer must match the length of the transfer group. And finally, the last line, which is just an infinite loop. Again, to look at more of the details about these function calls, just look in the MIPSPY.C, MIPSPY.H, DMA.C, and DMA.H files. Once you are done debugging, you can quit your session by clicking on the red Terminate button. There are a number of online resources available where you can go to get more information about Hercules microcontrollers. The first is the Hercules web pages that are on ti.com. Here you can download official device data sheets, technical reference manuals, and application notes. You can also download software like Halcogen, Now Flash, and the high-end timer integrated development environment. 
You can also order development kits through the TI eStore from these web pages. The next online resource that is at your disposal is the TI Engineer to Engineer or E2E support forum. Here you can find the latest news and announcements about Hercules MCUs in addition to searching for technical content about Hercules. There is also a team of applications engineers available to answer questions posted on this forum. The final web-based resource is Hercules Wikis. These sites feature how-to guides, introduction videos, and general information about Hercules MCUs. The wikis also contain useful information like development kit board schematics and training content. I hope that you have found this video useful. Thank you for watching.